and welcome to a new edition of Gear Review and today it's all about High Gain Distortion, a High Gain Distortion pedal made by Guitar Slinger Effects and it's called 87 MK3. Yes, you are right. 1987 is an album by Whitesnake and John Sykes was the guitar player and he played in 1978 The Spore Custom in Black with Mirror Hardware. Hmm. And yes, you are right. This pedal is made to reproduce the sound of this album. It was developed by Santiago Alvarez and of course Alexander Bayroth. And um, I'll tell you more about the story of Santiago, Alex, the pedal, the sound of the album after we check the pedal out. Now, let's see what we got over here. We do have a pedal with three knobs and one switch. And the knobs over here are volume, the gain, and a presence control and there is a bass switch. As you can see I'm at noon with the volume, at noon with the gain and almost pretty much down with the with the presence knob. And that's because my Les Paul is sounding very bright. That's why I chose this sound over here. For the song at the beginning of the video I was using a sound with, I think, the presence up to this point. And I did that because in the mix I was cutting through the other guitars and I was cutting through the bass. Let's start with the presence control all the way down. Okay, let's check what it does on a nine o'clock position. It's a little bit more freshened up. If I'm going more into the 12 o'clock position, you will hear more presence. So let's compare it to the first position. And it also does something to the mid-range. You get a more mid-rangey sound. Turn it on more to the other side. That's the most incredible tone control I've ever seen on a pedal, really. Because depending on what speaker you use, depending on what room you're in, depending on what amp you're using, you have the whole world in your hand. No, 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 don't sing the song. It's really, really, really useful to have this variety of mid and presence control. I really like it a lot. Okay, I think we don't have to talk about the volume control because it controls the volume of the paddle. But let's see what the gain control does. So let's get down to the noon position of the volume control. Okay. So this is not the pedal that gives you any kind of ACDC-ish kind of crunchy sounds. It's called high gain distortion and that's what you get. One thing I discovered while recording the intro song of this video is that 
the more you lift the, the knob to the noon position over here. Let's get down with the, the control over here. From zero to 12 o'clock or from 6 to 12 o'clock you have the possibility to um, bring down the volume knob of your guitar and get some crunchy sounds. There you have the ACDC-ish sounds. But the more you turn up the gain control over here the more compressed will it get and basically that's what it's all about when you're talking about 80s guitar sounds like the 1987 album of Whitesnake. It's a thing that Santiago likes to do with the amps. I remember the Satriani Marshall had the same thing. So um, you turn it up, you turn it up, you turn it up, you get more and more and more distortion. And then starting at 12 o'clock, you get more compression. I call it the bad day sound. So normally when I have a good day, I would play it up to here. If I'm feeling not that safe in a lick, I would give me a little bit more of compression and have a little bit more safety net on my sound. I like this very much. And the last thing we have to talk about is the bass knob. As I told you, my guitar is not the bassiest of all guitars I have. This one over here. So I like the possibility to give it a little bit more bass especially for solo sounds i like the the bass sound a lot like over here Without the bass, <clears throat> I don't like it very much. Let's give it a little bit more of presence. So let's crazy out of a paddle like this. Let's get back to the first thing I'm doing when I'm checking out a new paddle, a distortion paddle like this. Uh, first thing is I compare it to my beloved distortion sound on my amp. Let's check it out. And just so that you know, this is the basic sound uh, that I'm running with this amp. Okay, now let's compare the pedal through the clean sound of my amp with my distortion sound. This is absolutely crazy. This pedal sounds like my amp. And I didn't know that I'm so much into Whitesnake and John Sykes. So much um, about the pedal and the sound of the pedal. I told you I uh, just want to tell you a little bit more about the story of the sound and the story of this panel. Of course, I told you Santiago Alvarez was one of the guys who was involved in the process of developing this um, paddle. 
And um, he's known for the YJM Marshall. He's known for the Satriani Marshall. He's known for the Appetite for, for Destruction Marshall. Alexander Byrod, of course, is known for being a number one guitar player, not even here in Germany, in Europe. And um, I think he was at the studio when they recorded this album at the time in Los Angeles. And that's a story he told me in an interview we did. Um, the link is over here to the interview. Let's talk about the history of the sound of the 1987 album. It was recorded and I think they spent about two weeks uh, looking for the real good guitar sound and couldn't find the way how to record the guitars for this album. John Sykes, um, as I read and uh, saw on YouTube, um, was using an MK3 Mesa Boogie Colosseum head. He was using this and was pretty happy with the head. Of course, he had some Jose Marshalls, um, the same Marshalls that Mick Mars, uh, Eddie Van Halen, uh, what other guy did use them? Um, Steve Vai had a Jose Marshall. And um, all these guys were using these Marshalls modded by a guy uh, in Los Angeles called Jose. But this album was recorded with the Mesa Boogie, I just told you. Uh, so um, they couldn't figure out and spend two weeks in finding the right guitar sound. There was an, a studio next to the studio that they were working at. And there was a guy called Bob Rock, who wasn't that famous at that time as he is now because of his work with Mötley Crüe and uh, Metallica, of course. And they asked him, um, uh, Bob, can you help us and find a good guitar sound? Basically, uh, what I learned right now is he did some kind of splitting right and left and put some harmonizing on it and in chorus on something and, and delays. And that's what became the famous guitar sound. But the basic thing is a Mesa Boogie Colosseum had Mark III and that's what they were using to get the basic sound. So uh, when we are talking about the compression of this pedal that you get after the noon position, it's um, a thing that is very common with Mesa Boogie amps that you have this fat mids and this compression in the mids. Um, that's what all of the guys like of Mesa Boogie amps. So um, that's what I wanted to tell you about the story behind the paddle. Okay, I think that's enough for today. If you have further questions, write in the comments below and don't forget to the bell, like and share and whatever you want to do with this video. Thank you very much. See you soon.